Hey YouTube, Nathan from Overland GIS. It's a really quick video today regarding the use of NOTAMs for drone operations. NOTAM is a notice to airmen. It is a system used throughout the UK to allow airlines, military um, to share information about operations that may impinge or impose on each other, flight paths, things like that. Um, I've not actually needed to do one before using the drone, purely and simple because I haven't operated in an area that's highly congested or potentially close to a high risk area. Um, two jobs have recently come in that require me to fly exceptionally close to three or four RAF bases. Um, so it was a matter of courtesy uh, and for a matter of safety and to not have military police knocking on my door. Um, I started making some investigations and then some inquiries yesterday. Um, there's not a lot of information on the internet about how to uh, do no times. You, you, you cover it during your exam, um, but that was 18 months ago now. And as I said, I've not needed to do one yet. So I guess if anything, this is a quick, simple refresher course on how to set up no times when you're using a drone. This here is the area I need to operate in. And we've got RAF Linton here, RAF Dishforth here, RAF Topcliffe here, and RAF Leeming here. So I'm here. So we are about three miles from Dishforth, about 10 miles from Linton, seven miles, five to seven miles from Topcliffe, and about 12 miles from Leeming. And we've got top cliff, sorry, we've got Leeming at the top. Dishforth here. And then there's, again, another base there. So what you've got here is my VFR chart that covers my area, the one that I tend to use the most. I live around about here. Just on the outside of the ATZ for Doncaster. Um, but as I mentioned, this week we're going to be coming up the A1. And we're going to be operating here, right in the middle of these four RAF bases. So you've seen the areas that I need to operate in. What have I needed to do? Um, first and foremost, a risk assessment, hence why I've identified these as risks. Risk assessment requires you to follow a set procedure and identifying certain risks and hazards that could put your drone, your crew, but more, impo more importantly, the general public at risk. So for my risk assessment, the first thing we identified was the proximity to these airfields. So the first thing that we've done is got contact details for RAF Topcliffe, RAF Dishforth and RAF Linton. Leeming's just a bit further away than I need to worry about. Um, my investigations, first thing they pull up, RAF Dishforth stopped operating as an RAF base in May of this year. So don't need to worry about there. Next uh, risk is RAF Topcliffe. There just so happens to be a um, the Yorkshire Ambulance Air Service there. So I've made them aware of the drone operation. Um, made the RAF aware. Uh, and they have again suggested that although... RAF leaming to the north is probably further away than I'd need to worry about. It's their approach and they have the right to fly at a low. I think the lowest height they would be flying in at would be 250 foot, sorry, 250 meters. Um, the maximum ceiling height that I can operate the drone is 120 meters. So there's a gap, but not the typical kind of gap that you're used to operating with a drone when you see an, an airliner going over the top of you. And they're at 30,000 feet and you're at 400. Um, so RAF Leeming is on the approach or we will be operating on their approach. So the usual things that are, are requested, um, name, address, telephone number. The main reason that the RAF bases take your telephone number if, is if there is an emergency. You have a dedicated phone that you can pick up while you ground the drone, you pick it up and you'd answer. And we would basically save RAF Topcliffe telephone number and we'd save RAF Leeming as a telephone number. So if on those mornings that we operate a telephone call does come in from either of those airports, the first thing we will do is ground the drone. 
get it out of Sky as quickly as we safely as possibly can, then answer the phone. So uh, upon speaking to RAF Topcliffe yesterday, they suggested that a NOTAM, Notice to Airmen, may be useful, not a requirement because I am operating actually outside of their controlled airspace, but as they said, it would be useful for them. Um, they have something called a CAD uh, system uh, as opposed to the CAA that has uh, the no time system, but it's um, it's basically the same thing. And what he, uh, the chap I spoke to yesterday, um, the sergeant at the ATZ at Topcliffe said that we would have a chart up in the board, up in that, up in their air traffic control room, and they would simply identify on there that there was a drone operating in their local area. It's not something that they need to give me permission for because I'm outside of their area and I'm flying a sub seven aircraft, so. I have the landowner's permission, that's the most important thing. But what they suggested that I do would be to, to place a NOTAM. So NOTAM, Notice to Airmen, um, it's not something I've ever needed to, uh, to use before. So I've obviously gone online and done a little bit of research, found a couple of web pages that are exceptionally useful. I'll, I'll link those at the bottom of the video. They basically gave me the contact number for the CAA for what I needed, but also uh, it, it, it just shows you what Nantes and what CADs with the military would see in relation to aircrafts uh, and their positions. It's just useful to go and have a look at. Um, the one I looked at was um, notaminfo.com. Uh, um, and on there it says quite clearly that it's not somewhere where you can uh, place no TAMs. It's basically a source of information. So um, I was required to contact the CAA Air Regulations Operations Department. Their telephone number, again I'll link at the bottom, but was 0207 453 6599. That's the telephone number that you need to ring if you are operating and you believe you need to place a no TAM. What they've said to me is I need to provide them with the Latin longitude so they can get an exact position as to where I'm going to be operating from. The dates and times that I want to be operating on and my permission for aerial work, I'm required to send that information through to them. Once that information has been passed through, they will decide, they will make the decision as to whether they believe a NOTAM needs to be placed out or not, which is interesting to know because I was under the impression that if you were operating in a highly congested area or in a potentially close to restricted areas, the no time was uh, was an obligation. It was just a, it was a, a standard requirement. It transpires that it's not. It's something that the CAA will make a decision on themselves. Um, so yeah, basically, if you need to operate exceptionally close to high risk areas, you will most likely need to place a no time. What you'll be required to do will be to contact the CAA, give them your details, and they will place the NOTAM on your behalf. And what you can then do is go onto web pages like notaminfo.com and you would, should see your um, your NOTAM information. One thing that we are that we've agreed is the weather's really bad at the moment. So what we've initially said is we'd like to operate on Monday, uh, ceiling height maximum of 120 meters for probably two to three hours. However, if on Monday the weather's poor, we will contact the um, Air Regulations Operations Department at the CAA and make them aware of the poor weather and um, suggest that we will look to do it later in the week. And what they said is they will close that one down and open up another one, close it down and open up another one. So if we're able to operate on Monday, the no time will be closed off on Monday afternoon. If not, we will contact them on Monday and say, look, it's potentially going to be Wednesday and they will just keep it open for me. So this is a really useful bit of information in terms of what I need to do, barring giving the CAA my latitude, longitude, name, address and permission for aerial work. Um, they do everything else for me. So, yeah, if you need any help regarding no times, you want to get in touch with the CAA's Air Regulations Operations Department. Hope that's helpful. Cheers.